All right. It looks like we are live. How's it going? Sorry about the wait there. Something came up literally right as I was about to push the live button that I had to go quickly run and take care of. But here we are. We're live. Wow. I, I haven't done a live stream in years. So super happy to be doing this. I definitely want to engage more with everybody. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for being here. I see everyone in the chat saying hello. And uh, let me know if uh, anything is wrong, if the volume's not good or anything like that, so that I can see about fixing it here. So, oh, it looks like there's 110 people on right now. Is that right? Oh, this my screen is saying 110 and... I got it pulled up on this other screen here and it's saying, oh, it's saying 120. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> it said 50 there for a second, but yeah, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be wiring up some fire alarms today and testing some stuff and just chatting. So yeah, thanks for joining in. Like I said, haven't done one of these in a few years. So uh, yeah, it's kind of sort of newish, but uh I don't know. If I like this, I'll definitely have to do more in the future. So, wow, there is a lot of support happening right now in the comments. Thank you all. Oh, my goodness. Wow, thank you uh, to the person that just donated $5 just to say avocado. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow. All right, so let me show you what I have in in store for you today. So I got this table here and there's a bunch of stuff on it. So I'm sure uh, anyone that's been in the fire alarm community for a while knows that the New Year's fire alarm sounding is definitely a big deal. Every year I love going through and watching everyone's videos of all the alarms going off and it's definitely uh, something that I, I want to take part in. So uh, that's what I'm going to be uh, doing. Let me quickly put the chat up on my phone here so that I can read your messages while I'm over here because I can't see the chat right now. My laptop's kind of far. So yeah, uh, New Year's fire alarm sounding. It's a big deal. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be wiring up all these alarms and uh, yeah, kind of getting ready for the New Year's fire alarm sounding. I hope everyone had a happy holidays, happy Christmas, if that's what you celebrate. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good, happy holiday season. So. I do see the request to add the safe path panel to the FX-64 fire alarm panel. Uh, voice evacuation in the garage is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I was able to do that this year. I haven't quite thought about putting the, uh, it's over here, my wheel lock safe path in the garage, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe at some point, I have thought about getting other panels, so. I, I honestly don't see that system changing too much, but um, it's definitely something I'm going to keep in mind. So I'm trying to like read the comments every once in a while and then uh, kind of go between wiring everything up. So yeah, let me uh, show you what I'm thinking for the New Year's. Uh, let me tilt this up a little bit so you can see me. So last year, if you remember, I had... This thing, the Vixen Horns, super big, super loud siren. This thing is insane. It's probably the loudest device I have in my collection. So you can't really go a New Year's now without this thing being involved in some way. So I have this right here. <clears throat> That's definitely going to be involved. And then last year I did some things with my Spectral Advances. They're somewhere up here. I don't know where, oh, there they are. All the specialists are right up here. 
Um, but I did some spectra alerts last year, and this year I'm thinking about uh, something a little different. A lot of people, I get requests all the time to see the Wheelock 7002 T's. So I'm thinking this year, in addition to the siren, we're going to set off some Wheelock 7002 T's. So I have four of them here. These four are the better sounding ones that are in my collection. If you recall, in some videos I made years ago, I have a couple 7002 T's that are cool, but they don't sound right which is kind of why I wanted them in my collection because, you know, it's it's pretty interesting how they sound. So those two are these ones. And uh, I figured we'll just set up the four ones that actually do um, sound normal because those are going to be the loudest. And um, especially on this one, I'll show you the terminal on it. It's kind of broken. So you can see right like that. Um, let me show you a normal one. All right, here's a normal one. See those terminals? And the thing is, if those terminals right here, if those metal parts ever touched while the panel was supplying power through its notification appliance circuit, then that could fry my panel. So I definitely did not want to use this one. And um, and then if I had four of my regular ones, it'd make an even number of, number of alarms. So two on each side of the siren. So that's why I'm not using all of my 7002 T's, but it's still going to be a pretty cool sound off, I think. Let's see what everyone's saying. Yeah. Do I still have my weather radio? Yes, I do. I have a couple of them. They're kind of packed away right now. Uh, just because we don't have a lot of severe weather incidents where I live now, but way back in the day in the original SCR, uh, and the SCR is kind of like the room I do all of my fire alarm hobby stuff in, stands for security experiment room. Um, uh, back where I live in the original SCR, uh, there was definitely a substantial tornado and severe weather threat. So uh, that's when I made a lot of videos of those. But nowadays, I, if I had it, it just wouldn't go off. And uh, I had a couple of bad experiences where that thing, I, had a, I used to have it right next to my bed and it'd go off at like two in the morning, just telling me that there's like a severe weather watch or something and it would freak me out. So uh, yeah, even if, uh, even if there was a threat here, I probably wouldn't have the same setup that I used to have. I, I definitely do recommend having one of those if you live near tornadoes or severe weather, but um, it's probably not the smartest idea to have it right next to your bed so it blasts your ears at two in the morning. <laughs> All right. Is it lagging? A lot of people are saying lag. Let's see here. Let me check my internet connection. Let me know when it stops lagging, if it stops lagging. Okay, how is it now? Is it still lagging? Everything's looking good on my phone. Hmm. Lag is gone. Okay, good. Just want to make sure that, uh, everything is good with the live. So, uh, and yes, it, lag could definitely happen, which is something I was a little worried about because, uh, the garage here or the SER used to not have internet connection, but we recently upgraded our internet to Starlink where it had a little better of a signal and the signal now reaches out here in the garage. So it's not the strong signal, but I'm hoping that it's good enough for a live.
I'm getting a lot of comments about the mic saying that it's kind of broken. Is that is that uh, something that um, is happening with everyone? Everyone's kind of got to let me know. One person saying to refresh your browser, so uh, definitely do that. But uh, okay, some people are saying no. Okay, uh, other people are saying yes. I wonder if it's possible if the lag could be coming from your end of things, because some people are saying that it's not lagging. And yes, thank you to everyone that is, uh, or the people that have super chatted. That's super generous. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, uh, oh, and then for the pull station, for the New Year's sounding, I have the Global Fire Control Plant Evacuation Pull Station. This was probably the coolest pull station that I used on my channel this year. So, um, Oh, thank you to the person in the chat that super chatted. Um, anyways, uh, this was definitely probably the coolest pull station that I used in a video this year. So I figured, why not? Um, why not use this in the New Year sounding? Can you buy me a BG10, please? Uh, thank you for well, number one for the super chat, but. Uh, you can probably buy one on eBay for um, that amount. Their their BG tens usually don't sell as much as other alarms do. So, um, thank you to Gavin for the super chat. Um, what is my favorite fire alarm? Gosh, I get that question all the time, and I'm not entirely. I don't know if I can say one because I really like them all and. You know, whatever alarm I just recently most got in the mail, that's usually like my favorite until I get the next one. And uh, and then that one's my favorite. So um, I honestly don't know if I can answer that question. There's alarms that I'd recommend to people, but um, yeah, I don't know. So anyways, so I'm going to put this pull station up in the New Year's sounding. And then I was thinking I do have this yellow custom back box that goes on the back of the pull station here. So I'm thinking we're going to put that on it as well. So that way it can kind of stand up as I pull it on its own. So, so that'll be the pull station this year. And then I was also thinking about doing something a little extra special with a relay. I have these lights, these, uh, red Christmas lights that I got at Google and they're brand new as you can see. I'm thinking about using a relay and wiring these Christmas lights up so that uh, when you pull the alarm the Christmas lights turn on so and they're red so that I could maybe use them year-round on systems kind of like my red spinny beacon so um, yeah uh, the Unitex smoke alarm, I don't know, Let's see, where is that? Um, is this it? Yes, this is it. Here's the Unitex smoke alarm. Um, I was actually going to make a video on this this year. I got the special D batteries, and then I realized that um, it didn't work. I, I put them in, and uh, nothing happened. So... Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make a video of this going off, unfortunately. I'd be super curious to know what this sounds like and how sensitive it is, but I don't think mine works. But I'm definitely going to keep it because this is a very rare smoke alarm. I've still never seen another one of these before. I know it looks like a shower fan, but this is actually a very old and vintage smoke alarm. So I got this when I was installing smoke alarms in people's homes free of charge from... Uh, the American Red Cross, I was volunteering with them um, and a fire department. I actually made a whole video about this and the home fire safety campaign. And basically we go door to door and install smoke alarms in people's homes for free. And this was one of the alarms that was replaced and I got to keep it for my collection. So 
little story there. All right, so back to the New Year sounding. And then as a panel, I'm thinking about using the SFP 400 again. This thing has a bunch of troubles on it. I don't have resistors or anything. It has a circuit trouble, which I don't know how to fix. Um, or I don't have the time to troubleshoot and figure out how to fix it. So uh, it'll have troubles on it, but uh, it still works for small things like the New Year's sounding. So we're gonna wire all this up through the panel. And um, to do that, a lot of people have been asking how I am able to uh, wire up things like the siren and Christmas lights to a fire alarm control panel. And that is through the use of these special relays. I don't recommend using appliances that run on 120 volts AC with the regular relays that are in a fire alarm control panel because that might fry it if it cannot take that load. Um, but I did buy these special relays. They don't cost that much and they are activated by 24 volts DC. So it can be activated by the, the panel's um, external power or uh, the NAC. It, and this is, by the way, this is totally not something that uh, you'd ever see someone doing in a real building, wiring up a, a relay to a NAC. But um, for what I'm doing as a hobby, I can wire this up through the NAC. And then when basically when the alarm trips, it would open up a separate circuit. And that separate circuit on this relay can support 120 volts uh, AC of power. So um that's how i'm able to wire up everything else all right uh i see you jackson hi i do see everyone else in the comments so thank you all for commenting. I'm trying to read everyone's. Um, let's see. How can we send you some of our equipment? Uh, send me an email. You can get my email uh, on the YouTube channel about section, or you can uh, send me a message through my website, scrsafety.com. Um, <laughs> I've been watching you for 10 years, literally my childhood. Thank you for all of the uh, long-term subscribers. I appreciate it. And hi, Josiah. Yes, I saw you. Let's see. All right. It would be funny if you did the cheap Amazon fire alarm. Yes, I, I, I want to get one of those because I don't have one. And I think that'd be cool to at least get and make a video on because I've seen a lot of people are getting those to start off their fire alarm collection. And it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to make a video on one of those just so people can see what they're all about. I'm sure there's probably other videos. I'm not the only fire alarm YouTuber, so... There's probably other videos out there, but it still would be cool to have one and make a video. Will I ever use the SFP 400 again in a system test series? I don't see it being used in a system test series just because um, I've already done a whole series on this panel right here. And um, if I did, let me show you a picture of it. If I did, use it um again i feel like it kind of get old so actually i've had multiple series with this panel so if i were to use it then i would it's probably just more for the smaller videos like these new year soundings and other stuff that i do um and if i were to get a new system i would definitely probably just get a whole new panel so I don't have too much experience with Arduino. Um, 
But uh, my advice would be to good luck. Uh, definitely, yeah, research everything. Make sure you know it's, you're not going to fry anything before you turn on the power. I've definitely fried things before. And that's just how you learn. But um, yes, electricity can be dangerous. So just use caution and make sure you definitely know what you're doing before you turn on that power, <laughs> as I've learned in the past. Um, all right. I feel like we should start wiring up some things. So this is the box that the lights came in. So the first thing I'm going to wire up is probably the pole station. And that's probably just because that's going to be the easiest thing to wire up. So I have some wire. I'm going to use probably this wire. It's got a thicker gauge to it. And um, this is just FPL. Um, if any of you are really in this hobby and have your own collections and wire up your own systems, I highly, you probably already know this, but I highly recommend getting just real fire alarm grade wire, um, such as FPL, just because this stuff is uh, really nice. It makes things really easy. I uh, used to remember, or I, I used to wire things up with just kind of spare wires that I'd find around. What you can do as long as it's as the wire can support the load. But uh, when I finally got the FPL, it uh, definitely made things a lot easier. And I got a thousand feet of it, and I, I only had to buy it one time, and I still haven't ran out of it. So, and that's just because I can reuse a lot of the wires. So. Super nice. Um, oh, and I, and I am gonna put it into this yellow back box here. Um, however, as you can see on the inside of it, there's a little knockout there that needs to be opened up and uh, so I can put the wire in. So let me go get a hammer real quick. Actually, probably gonna do this on the ground here, just so I don't rattle the table. There we go. And then just kind of pop it open. Boom, there we go. Now we can put a wire in the back. Here's the pull station with the wire. And we'll just wire it through. Oh yeah, and there is one more very special device that I am going to use in the New Year's fire alarm sounding which I will give you a sneak peek of it in a second. I'll give you a hint though. I'm not gonna share what it is because we gotta keep it somewhat as a surprise, right? For the sounding, for the video. But I'm gonna tell you this, this the device is pretty cool. It's not necessarily fire alarm related, but it is, uh, uh, it, it's an interesting device. I'll, I'll give you a, a hint in a, in a minute here. Go ahead and open up this pull station and screw it into the back box. I should use con. Yes, you should definitely use conduit on these systems. I'm not just because it's only going to be wired up and used once or twice to test it and then make the video. But um, if it were a more permanent solution, then yes, definitely follow codes and use conduit and everything. Can you wire up your Spectra Classic? Uh, I'm probably not gonna do it for this live, but if you want to see videos of it going off, 
there's probably a dozen videos out there on my channel of it going off. So I'm just screwing this thing into the back box right now. There we go. That looks really cool. All right, check this out. There it is. This will be the pull station we use to activate the New Year's sounding. So you lift it and you pull it down. And we'll set it here. Bam. There it is. That was easy. Hello to Jacob. I'm reading your comment right now. I'm super happy to hear that uh, that you like the channel. Could I potentially wire up the other strobes that are a different color? Actually, I was thinking about that. All the uh, Gentex commanders that I have that are multicolored or multicolored or whatever ones whatever words, the correct version. Um, but uh, I think that'll be something I'd probably do in the future just because just last year I made a very similar video with the, with the commanders, so. Um, I see the Spectral or Classic request. Actually, I think I already talked about that one. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and wire this pull station into the fire alarm control panel. We'll just put it into zone one here. Need a small flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and move this a little closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing. This is not a tutorial, but I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing. It's a thicker gauge of wire, so it's kind of stiff, kind of hard to maneuver around. It takes a while to wire up these alarms for every system tests and all these videos that's something that a lot of people don't realize is just how long it takes to wire everything up and get a video ready to go Can some All right, and we'll wire up that resistor a little later. So there we go, the pull station's now wired up. Hello from Seattle, Washington. Glad you can make it. Hello from Massachusetts. Will I ever use the botch panel in a system? Probably not, uh, just because that one is it does have a couple troubles on it that I can't get rid of. Um, and I like the panels that I use on these system tests to not have troubles on it. Um, how's it going, Nathan from Nebraska? How's it going, Quincy from Utah? Wow, there's a lot of people from everywhere. Hello from Canada. You know, I did, um, 
I did get recognized in public for the very first time the other day, which is not, that's something that definitely caught me off guard because number one, I don't show my face too often here on YouTube. I have shown my face before, but um, yeah, someone recognized me and they said, yeah, you kind of look like that fire alarm YouTuber. I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so it's kind of cool that the channel's starting to get to that point. All right. Okay. So let's figure out what we're going to wire up next. I think next we should do these 7,002 T's, these guys here, and they all kind of sound a little different. So I was thinking before I wire these up, I'll set each of these off so that you can hear the difference, the different sounds between the alarms. So. Let me do that here. I'll be just a second. There's the 7002 T's. And they all sound a little different. Now one of them's like a lot louder than all the others. So you might be able to see that here. All right. So I got this wire and I'm just gonna use some batteries. It'll be slightly overpowered, but it's okay. It won't hurt the alarm. It's only a few volts overpowered. I'm just gonna use the battery method. All right. And then of course, Always wear hearing protection with these alarms. Seriously, I used to not wear hearing protection when I was younger, but um, as I'm growing older, I've definitely realized that it's very smart to wear these. So uh, if you test alarms, if you have your own collections, every time you set it off, I highly, highly, highly recommend wearing ear protection. So, all right. We'll start with this one and just go down the line so you can hear the different pitches. Here we go. sound pretty different from each other which is one thing that's really cool about the 7002 t's is they're all kind of a little bit different so i'd say this one was definitely the quietest this one compared to this one this one's like honestly i'd be comfortable playing this without hearing protection on it's it's super quiet but this one's these two especially are, are really loud so we'll wire them all up and uh, on New Year's sounding, you'll get to see them all going off at the same time. So that'd be pretty cool. Hello, Jacob. I see you, Cat Fusion. I see you in the comments. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Hello, Gavin from Indiana. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. What's your cheapest fire alarm? Probably one of the call points. 
you can get call points shipped in from China for very, very cheap or shipped in from somewhere. Uh, they actually, they might have a U.S. stock of them, some companies. But uh, yeah, call points are definitely super cheap. And uh, yeah, cheap is probably an understatement. Literally one of the call points I got broke within like five minutes of having it. Just by activating it, it broke. But uh, yeah. What am I going to do for 100K subs? That is a good question. I have a lot of ideas, but I haven't decided on anything yet. Um, I, I'll decide more when we get closer. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a big deal. That's something I've been thinking about, honestly, all year. Of just, wow, we're almost there. And uh, I think that'll be a really big thing for the channel. But not only the channel, really the Fire Alarm community, because... Back when I first started, fire alarms, th this whole hobby here, that was uh, that was something that like almost no one did. Like there were a few, I'd say there were about a dozen or so, maybe two dozen fire alarm channels that um, posted videos here and there. And the fire alarm community was super small. But with this channel reaching as many people as it has, the fire alarm community is like everywhere. Like I've heard stories of people very near to where I live that are like into fire alarms. And um, yeah. So since, since the community has grown as much as it has, it's, it's really a big thing because um, everyone that's interested in this can find people that are, uh, that live close to them. Um, to share enjoyment in the hobby. Uh, I remember when I was growing up, I drove like eight or nine hours to meet up with one of my friends that was um, also partaking in this hobby. And uh, nowadays you, you don't have to travel as, uh, as far to, uh, to meet up with someone and wire up some alarms or, you know, uh, yeah, do things in the hobby with. So, I think it's a, it's a it's really cool that the fire alarm community has grown this big and it continues to grow. You know, I've I've talked with people in the fire department that are like, "Oh yeah, I know, you know, people collect fire alarms and people did this and and um yeah, it's it's really cool to see how big the community's gotten. Do I miss fire alarm videos? I'm gonna assume it's it's uh, videos from like a dozen or so years ago when I was first getting into this hobby. And you know, I do miss uh, spending so much time on YouTube watching different fire alarm videos. I used to watch everyone's videos and now the community has grown so big and I've gotten a lot busier where I can't necessarily do that, but I still definitely do occasionally sit down and just watch fire alarm video fire alarm youtube videos because uh yeah the hobby is interesting it's and it's fun to kind of still be well definitely be a part of the community and uh yeah so do i miss school fire drills yes that was like school fire drills was life you know <laughs> i uh yeah, those were that was like the one day of the month where I was like really happy to be in school. I personally did not enjoy school as much. Um, it's not that I wasn't. I, I did struggle a lot when I was in elementary school. Um, but uh, yeah, just the social aspect of of middle school and all that it just wasn't for me. And when I got to high school, I eventually had this program where I could kind of just leave. And as long as I was doing college full time at a, at a, at a college. So I kind of did that it, a dual credit program. And yeah, I, I did like one year of like actually going to a high school and then I was out. So, all right, let's uh, start wiring up 
some of these 7002 tees. So I guess we'll start with this one. And yeah, we'll go from there. Let me bring everyone closer again. Bang. Here we go. Probably going to need a few more wires than what I have laid out here. You pulled the fire alarm at school for a drill videos on your YouTube channel. Uh, yes. Um, that's cool that you were able to do that. I'm obviously assuming that you had permission and everything to do that. Watch if it's for a drill, then you definitely did. Um, one thing a lot of people ask me is, you know, how can I get more involved in fire alarms? Well, if you go, if you're in, school ask your school administration or your principal or whoever if you can be a part of the fire drills because you're interested in in uh being in that industry as a career and that's what i did that's how i was able to film all those school fire drill videos that i filmed and uh and chances are they are more than willing to let you be involved. Now, I've, I've, I've been to a lot of schools and there was one school that had no idea what I was like asking, <laughs> but, um, and they did not really do anything for me, but 90% of the time people are, especially schools are absolutely willing to uh, help you out and exploring what you want to do as a career. So as, as long as you approach them the right way and ask in the right way, then uh, you definitely should be able to be involved in the fire drills at some point. I remember I typed like a whole packet for my middle school on ways you can improve safety in the building. And I found some codes that my school, some fire codes, some fire code violations that my school had and then also gave like a bunch of tips on how to improve fire safety. And I don't think they did really anything with it, to be honest, because I handed it in and never heard anything back. But it was still cool that my school let me get involved in that way. Felt like I actually had a purpose at that point. And yes, I see you had permission. Otherwise, don't go pulling fire alarms. That is not a good thing. <laughs> All right, we all, almost have all four of them wired up here. And I'll need to wire in a resistor in this last one. Let's see. We'll take this resistor.
You'd like to see me go to some tornado sirens. Yes, I would like to go to some tornado sirens. For those of you that are in the fire alarm community that are haven't really looked into tornado sirens, you should definitely also look into that in addition into fire alarms because those things are super loud and they are super cool. Uh, yeah, I've had I've had friends in the community that don't really live around tornado sirens. And it's not until like they see it in person where they're like, oh, wow, that is cool. Because people don't realize you can hear those things for like a couple miles away from like a couple miles away. And um, yeah, mass notification like that is, is extremely interesting. And uh, yes, there will be videos this year I'm planning on getting. It might not be a tornado siren, but some sort of siren filmed. Um, yeah, so the whole siren community too. I've seen like the whole siren con meetups, those videos, and, uh, it'd be cool to go to those and see all the different sirens people have. All right. I'm going to set all four of these off here. It should work. And if not, we will know if something's wrong. Let me get my hearing protection. And here we go. Yep, I would definitely say those are working. <laughs> that is loud. Let's do it again. Wow. That honestly sounds a little creepy almost. All the different pitches of these alarms. Um, and then, yes, this panel does do FWR, and um, so I would like to use a relay and figure out how I can use a filtered DC power supply on these Wheelock 7002 T's. So, actually, I might be able to use a relay. Yeah, I can use a relay that's built into the panel for that. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So, so, yeah, I'm still kind of figuring everything out one step at a time here. I know everyone's saying it's how loud it is. Yes, those are very loud. Personally, you prefer FWR. What? That's that's one I have not heard. But uh, if FWR is your thing, then, uh, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of modern fire alarm control panels are for you. FW what? <laughs> um, FWR is like, it's an unfiltered DC power. And if I use that on the 7002 T's, it would be healthy for the components within my fire alarm control panel. It would not be healthy for the alarms. And they would kind of sound a little bit weird. But there are several videos on my YouTube channel where I use FWR on alarms. And you can definitely hear the difference. So. Yes. Do you prefer horns or voice evacuation and fire alarm systems in general? Like when I go into a building, uh, I do like seeing voice evacuation. Those systems are extremely expensive. Uh, it, they're, they take a lot. Ooh, there's a thumbs up there. I don't know how that got there. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're expensive. They take a lot of time to wire up. Um, they're not easy systems to install and program. However, uh, I've noticed in a lot of videos of real fire alarms going off in buildings, people tend to take voice evacuation a lot more seriously because, they don't see a random fire alarm making noise on the wall. They hear someone actually speaking to them and asking them to leave the building in a certain calm manner. Or if it's like a, a skyscraper, they might have several floors stage and evacuate floor by floor to not clog up the stairwells. So I do like seeing voice evacuation. It is required by code. I believe in buildings that are more than four stories tall. And that can obviously vary jurisdiction by jurisdiction. 
but uh yes voice evacuation is is a very good thing i like seeing so but i also do like seeing other systems with you know cooler older alarms and stuff like that i was actually i was building the other day that had firelight bg12s and the new uh, simplex true alerts it's kind of an odd setup right you normally only see simplex with simplex but um I don't think I've actually ever seen Firelight with Simplex in a real building. So it was kind of cool to see that. Have you ever... <laughs> Have I ever been electrocuted when wiring up fire alarms? That is, that's a super valid question. And uh, to answer that question, yes, I have. <laughs> um, if you work around electricity uh, enough, you definitely are gonna make mistakes at some point. Um, like nothing serious or bad or anything. Never touch a strobe when it's flashing. That's not what I did, but I've heard of that happening before. Um, but yeah, I've been zapped and shocked here and there with little small shocks. But I always have everything unplugged when I'm wiring everything up. But you know, mistakes can happen. So, yep. All right. Let's uh, wire this into the panel. SFP is really interesting in that its first two notification appliance circuits, the NACs, they allow you to pick between class A and class B wiring. And for those that don't know, with class A wiring, the uh, end of the circuit ends back in the fire alarm control panel, whereas with class B wiring, the end of the circuit ends with the last alarm. Whereas the last two NACs on the, on the control panel, they just only allow you to do class B wiring. It's kind of interesting with the SFP 400. I've never seen that feature on any other panels that are out there. Um, at least panels that I have in my collection, maybe there's panels that I don't have that do that, but uh, it's kind of interesting how it's split. All right. Oh, no, we're not wiring this to the neck. We are using a relay. That's right. So we're going to have to do something kind of special in order to do that. We're going to need more wires. So kind of down here in my collection. All right here's where I have all of my wires. So I'm gonna get some more wires here. <laughs> you know, it might not actually be bad if I'm gonna use batteries for this to use to use some of these. I forget what they're called. It's not coming to mind. Gosh, I haven't used these in so long. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Can anybody remember what these are called? I forget what these are called. These ones kind of have like an alligator, alligator clips. Oh, hey, I, I knew that. <laughs> I just, uh, I literally said it. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're kind of like an alligator. Oh, wait, no, they're called alligator clips. 
All right. So yeah, I use some alligator clips. Okay. Do I miss the old S E R? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it was really nice having like a dedicated room because this garage has, as I'm sure you've seen in my videos, other things in it, cars, bikes. Um, it was kind of nice just to have like my own space where I could work on un uninterrupted. And, but this, this, uh, this garage definitely has some good benefits for one. I can have like a professional looking system in it, which, uh, yeah, the SCR system test, that's really nice. And, um, I don't know if the old SCR could support all the, the fire alarm collection that I have today. <laughs> I'd definitely be running out of space there. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to strip this, this wire, so let me go get some screws here. Wire strippers. I used to have like this really cool special Gentex wire stripping tool that where you just kind of clicked it on the wire and it was so helpful. It saves so much time because I'm just using these. Um, it was really nice. But one time when I was using it on a wire, it broke for whatever reason. It's probably just getting old. I had it for like years. But. Wheel lock MT or wheel lock exceeder. Mm, that was hard. I like the tone of the Wheelock Exceder better because the MT has more kind of a, a screech to it. But I do like how the MT has and all the different tones they can do. So that's a tough one. I would probably go with the Wheelock MT just because of all the different tones. If I had to pick one along, I would probably just end up using the wheel lock MT. Just because then I could switch the different tones around. And um, yeah. come and watch my fire alarm videos i'll tell you what um after the live stream if you send me an email with your channel link i will definitely go and subscribe i love seeing new fire alarm channels and i will definitely subscribe if you can just email me a link to your channel it's kind of hard to strip this wire then i'll definitely give you a subscription Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a pain to strip wires without that tool. You should buy some real wire strippers. I know, right? 
That's what I was saying. I used to have that uh, that Gentex wire stripping tool, which was so nice. But all right, where is the relay? There it is. Normally open, normally closed. Just a second here. Yeah, and again, what I'm doing is I'm wiring the power source because I'm going to use a, a filtered DC power source. I'm wiring that through the alarm relay on the fire alarm control panel so that I can use that power source so that the alarm sounds a little better. Or the alarms don't sound like they're powered on FWR. So there that is. And now what we need to do is put that together with a wire nut. Thank you, New England Aviation, for stopping in the live stream. I appreciate you showing up. Just saw your message saying that you're going to leave. <laughs> okay. And then these two right here are going to go into the battery, which we'll use these alligator clips to connect them. Okay. And no, none of this would be up to code if it were a real building, but uh, this is not a real building, so. Okay, so I suppose now we should work on the siren. So I'm going to need to wire in this relay, probably going to put it through the neck, and then I wire the siren in through the relay. So. I'm going to need more wires. Yay. Let's see what I got. How much volts are being applied to the 7002T? Uh, I believe some of them do come in a 12 volt model. Yeah, the 7002T-12, I think. Um, these ones right here are the 24 volts model. So 24 volts DC. All right. So I'm going to use another knack here. All 
I guess I haven't used a NAC yet. And then this wire is coming from the NAC on the panel. It is going to go into this relay and it's going to activate the relay, which will allow me to use the siren, which runs on 120 volts AC without frying the panel. To wire it into number eight, number seven. These two terminals. Positive to number seven. Sorry, everybody, if it's uh, not super entertaining wiring everything up. How many fire extinguishers do you have? A lot. Shout out to Fire Alarm Fun. How long have you been in the fire alarm hobby for? Um, really, honestly, well, you want to hear the story on how I, my first interaction with a fire alarm? Before I tell that story, let me go grab a screwdriver real quick. The one I have is too big. All right, so how I got into fire alarms, or I guess the uh, what sparked it all is I was in preschool, believe it or not, preschool. You know, sometimes it's just you have a calling in life. Um, and I remember the fire drills in preschool, they'd come into every room with like a bell and ring it. And then we were all supposed to leave and I had no idea what that meant or really what we were doing or what we were preparing for. I just knew if they rang the bell, then we had to leave. So, but there was one day where I remember staying there kind of next to the door and all of a sudden, eh, there was a loud alarm going off. We had no idea what was happening. And I remember looking at the teacher in the room and she would like instantly went into like panic mode. She just all lined us up real quick. And we went out into the main part of the building and we were walking. And I remember seeing something flashing on the wall. And I remember walking by and being like, what is that? And then we got outside and I had a front row seat to a fire truck pulling up to the school. And they got out and their full SCBA and everything. And, um, yeah. And, uh, so that's kind of what started it all. And then soon, um, got to the next elementary school, the fire drills, they had like, they set off the alarms in the buildings and that kind of um sparks my interest even more so really i've i've been uh interested in uh the fire alarm hobby since preschool so and the alarm that went off was i think it's the i have it right here yeah the 2901 9838 on the simplex strobe plate so that was the alarm that was in the preschool and then they had simplex 4251-20s, the older T-bars. 
So, yeah. <laughs> yep, I just put somebody in timeout. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, yeah, you had a similar experience in kindergarten. That's pretty cool. Xenon or LED? Um, Aren't those two like, oh, okay, no. I'm trying to, th can someone remind me the difference between xenon and LED? I think xenon, that's a strobe, right? Xenon is a strobe. And then the LED is just LED. Um, I would have to say LED because it's, it's, uh, it's more energy efficient. I think it looks cooler and um, yeah. LED. Do I have a GFCI in the garage? Yes, I do. All right. Shout out to Simplex Addressable Fire Beeper Box. There you go. Okay. So this thing right here is wired up. And now we just need to wire in its power supply. So um, I don't recommend people doing things like this unless they like know what they're doing because uh, it, it can get dangerous. But in order to power the siren, it runs on 120 volts AC and 120 volts AC is your standard American household plug, right? So I got this, it's a plug stripped on the end. Uh, if this were ever plugged in, this would be extremely dangerous, big way to get electrocuted, and it just doesn't look good, too, to have one of these lying around. <laughs> so, uh, but that is how I wire it up. And I believe the bumpy end is the positive end of it. And then the smooth end is the uh, the neutral or I guess in 120 volts AC, it's called hot and neutral. Um, yeah. All right, let's do this. Let me see here. All right. So I'm going to wire, let me just make sure I'm looking at my other relay I have here just to make sure I'm wiring it to the right terminal. Number six and four. Hamza Hansen, thank you for joining the live. I appreciate you stopping in. Glad it was fun for you. I had an experience in first grade, actually. Grant, you had a real evacuation. Wow. I wonder what happened. Uh, 
face reveal. This is not the first time I've shown my face, but yes, you are right in that I don't do it often. You had a gas leak. Wow. Yep. Gas leaks. You definitely need to evacuate for those. People are asking, putting my fire alarms over price and avoid talking about it then turning the comments off. Yeah, I turned the comments off on that video just because uh, a lot of people weren't seeing that I did something about it. Um, and they were continuing to comment. But yes, I ended up lowering the price. I do definitely agree. They start off overpriced, but uh, you have to realize people, um, I'm pretty busy. And if I'm going to spend the few hours it takes to make one of those boards, uh, it takes a lot of time, but uh, there were a lot of them that sold. And uh, thank you to everyone that purchased them. I'm sure you definitely got what you wanted for Christmas. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy to be able to do that for everyone. And I do plan on keeping those up for at least a couple more months here. So if you want a fire alarm board, you can check out scrsafety.com. And yeah. And yes, I still do have them. I have a couple gain of well centuries around and then a couple of uh, different alarms that I can put on the boards. But um, yeah. The, goal, the whole goal behind those boards, I'd say, is that I remember when I was super young, that's exactly what I wanted for Christmas. And um, it never came. So I wanted to just provide that means to people to get that. And that's what I did. And I'd say a lot of people got that this year. Uh, and I'm super happy to do that. Um, because not everyone wants to figure out how to wire up fire alarms, nor has the time to figure out how to do that. And I would absolutely encourage, if you have the time, if, if there's like any parents watching with young kids, that would be an awesome weekend project to um, do that. And... That's eventually what I did when I was young. Um, it took several weeks for us to figure out how to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, I would, I would highly encourage you to do that because you get to spend the quality time with that younger person, um, that loved one, um, and then learn something new in the process. But not everyone can do, do that. Not everyone has the time or the resources available to do that. So um, if you just don't want to deal with that hassle, I'm more than willing to uh, help you out there and make a fire alarm board for you. This wire is way too thick. I'm trying to get it in this terminal here. Got it. All right, and then this next process here, we're gonna need to use a couple wire nuts to wire it into the siren. Just gotta make sure we wire the smooth end into the white part of the siren. Thank you. 
grabbing some wire nuts here. Keep a couple of them in the panel. Right, smooth end is the uh, neutral. Someone want to double check me on that? If you know what I'm talking about. I do like waffles. Do I, what do I think of the new L series? You know, I'm starting to see a lot of those around now. It's really interesting to think about how often fire alarm systems get upgraded or installed because um, I remember when those first came out and then it's been what, a few years now? And now I see them everywhere. So if you think about it, like, yeah, fire alarms are constantly being upgraded, constantly being inspected, constantly being installed. And one of the big name companies like System Sensor the minute they put something out, it's gonna, it's gonna go everywhere. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it, it definitely gets the job done. It, I think it would have been cool if they changed the horn, but that's just coming from a collector's perspective, just because, you know, it's kind of cool to hear different sounding fire alarms every once in a while. But uh, it definitely gets the job done from a building perspective, and. Um, from a NFPA and code perspective, it definitely meets all the codes and uh, it's been certified and passed as a reliable working fire alarm. So uh, if, if as long as that met those requirements and you know, there's nothing substantially wrong with it, then I don't have a problems with it or I don't have a problem with it. Will you ever get a full-size tornado siren like Federal Signal? I've looked. <laughs> like, I've looked. I'm sure you could probably find them on eBay right now and go look and pick one up. If I ever did that, that'd be, like, literally me taking a huge step into the siren community because there are lots of um, siren hobbyists out there. There might be someone in the, in the live stream right now. Um yeah, there are a lot of siren people out there that actually do collect those like full on tornado sirens. They're bigger than me. Like those things are honestly huge. And uh, yeah, having one, I have no idea where I'd put it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but it would be cool to have. All right, I think this is all wired up. Okay, we only have one more thing to wire up, and that is dun -da -da -da, the uh, Christmas lights. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to strip this plug, and then we are going to uh, wire it up just like we did with the siren. So I should probably test it to make sure that it works. There's a plug up here. Yep. That's what it looks like. And uh, yeah, we'll strip that and work. Just got to make sure I know which side is which. Or does it matter with this one? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, um, the special device. Remember I talked about it earlier in the stream and I never showed you it. Let me, so there's this uh, special device that I'm gonna do, that I'm gonna have with the uh, with the New Year's sounding. I'll, I'll see if anyone can guess what it is. I'm not gonna fully reveal it because, you know, there's gotta be some sort of surprise to the video, but uh, I will, uh, I'll see if any of you can guess what it is. It's not necessarily a fire alarm device, but 
Uh, the only thing that I am going to give away is that it is a visual device of some kind. So uh, let me, it's over there. I'll go get it and uh, see if anyone can guess what it is. It's in a box. So you'll get to see the box that it's in. Let me grab it. It's in a custom box if that reveals anything. Here it is. I'm not going to show the front of the box because that tells you what it is. But here's kind of what it looks like. And it's in this box. And um, yeah, if you can guess what it is, I guess I'll give you a shout out. But uh, yeah, this will be in the video. And uh, it's this is this is a pretty cool device. So I was out playing with it the uh, the other night. I might have just given it away the other the other day. And uh, it's pretty powerful. It can do some pretty cool stuff. So this will also be in the sounding. Or at least that's what my plan is. I can't make a guarantee because things can always go wrong. And that's the thing about these YouTube videos is something can always go wrong because you only get one shot at it. So, all right, let's uh, continue wiring up these LEDs. All right. Let me go ahead and strip this plug here. Boop. There we go. Hello from England. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. You've never seen SCR Safety Live. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've done one of these. I think I have the last one public. So you could probably go back and watch it if you want, but. How do you guys, uh, how do you, how does everyone like the live? Because if, if everyone likes it, then I can always do more in the future. But it definitely has not been something I've done in a while. You know you got a call point, sorry. But it was fake. I don't exactly know what you're trying to say there. Red fire and security. All right, life safety man of Maine. Thank you for tuning in. And if you charge your phone up, then definitely join back later. Can you wire up Bell's smoke alarms and simplex light plates, please? Uh, this year I'm gonna do the 7,002 T's, but um, you'll definitely see lots of Bell's and simplex devices and other stuff in my system tests and maybe in the years to come. Is, is it the special red beacon? It's not the special red beacon. You've already seen that. I wouldn't get build up that much of a hype if it's something you've already seen, but uh, no, it's not that, but I guess good guess, some sort of good guess. <laughs> okay. And in order to power this, I'm gonna use this. I need another wire nut. I'm 
My first fire alarm was the uh, it was the Firelight BG12 with a Wheelock Exceder. The first one to come in the mail was the Wheelock Exceder. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, the first one to come in the mail was the Wheelock Exceder. And there is a video out there of me unboxing it. I was with my family when I was unboxing it and it, it never, I don't think it's public. It might have, it might be out there. It's been a while since I've looked that far back, but um, yeah, my family was like, that is not going off ever. <laughs> and uh, well, things have definitely changed since then, <laughs> but um, yeah, first fire alarm was the, Exceder and the BG12, and when I originally wired it up, I had to have help from someone, and it uh, we used the wrong power supply. We got 12 volts AC instead of DC, and yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually power it right until several years. But if, if you scroll all the way back to um, my original videos, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Let's see, I'm trying to think of like a good story to tell. Does anyone have like any questions that would spark a story? I have a lot of stories. I'm just trying to think. Something to do with fire alarms. As I wire up this relay here. Oh yes, and with this relay, it's kind of nice that, or it, it it can do it can support two different circuits. So um, I could run the siren and the lights on the same circuit. However, I don't, um, I don't. Know, I just don't like the idea of running both those on the same circuit since the siren draws so much. Uh, you've been in the channel since late 2018. Thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it and. Thank you for the support. Uh, I'm not going to give anyone not mod. Sorry about that. Um, shout out to Gavin Gaskill. you please wire up exit signs? Um, I have a bunch of videos out there about those. I, where I do wire, I think I've made like over the years, like three different videos on wiring up exit signs. Let's see here. I've been watching since your first video. Thank you, I appreciate all the support. When did I begin thinking about the military? Um, uh, I've always thought service was important. I'm the first one in my immediate family to join the military. And um, it was probably the summer of 2019 when I seriously considered it because that summer I went out and I spent 35 days in the wilderness with a small crew totaling six people um, living in tents the entire time. Only got like three showers within 35 days and got to the end of it. And honestly, it, it sounds like it could be miserable, but when you're out in nature, and uh or being out in nature you know it's definitely i feel like you're more at one 
uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Um, and I really enjoyed that summer and also really learned about teamwork. And I really loved being in aspects or the aspect of being with a team and um, going through hardship together and honestly making lifelong memories and lifelong friends along the way. So uh, that's when I was like, well, maybe the military could be good for me. And, um, you know, kind of look through all the different possibilities. And uh, yeah, originally wanted to do Marine Corps, but I had a lot of people talk some sense into me. Um, so uh, yeah, I was offered the position to be a firefighter for the Air Force and took that offer. And uh, yeah, here I am now. So that's kind of how I got involved. But uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of people miss in their lifetime truly going out on adventures with other individuals and truly making memories that last a lifetime and and having shared hardship with people. School is not a shared hardship. Shared hardship is something like we all had to sleep in the same tent together with all of our layers of clothing on because an unexpected snowstorm came in and it was really the only way we would comfortably, somewhat comfortably survive the night. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I would encourage everyone to get out at some point and just go on some sort of adventure with other people and uh, just live life. You know, it's there's times when you feel pain or when you're uncomfortable. And although you are uncomfortable, that's when you really um, build your character the most and become resilient as a person. And, uh, and that's when you really learn the most about yourself. So uh, yeah, I kind of saw the military as a way to continue that lifestyle. And um, I've been on a lot of small teams and a lot of large teams since then. And I've gotten to go out and do some really cool things to serve the country. So, yeah. All right. Have you ever saw someone pull the firearm and don't want to say it again, Grant? Wow. Wow. Jeez. Man, I'm honestly considering blocking you. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, well, no. I mean, yes, I have seen people pull fire alarms in like building inspections and stuff like that, but never in like a real fire emergency. But they do happen. I've been on several calls with the fire department where a building is actively on fire and the uh, the fire alarm system did its job. These systems do their job on a daily basis throughout the whole world where fires are started in the building and either a smoke detector or a heat detector or some sort of detection device, a pull station gets tripped and uh, they do their, they, they actually do do their job. I, a lot of people see them as an annoyance but, um, and oftentimes they get activated by accident, but there are times when these systems actually do go off because it's the real deal. So, but I actually did almost accidentally pull a fire alarm the other day. I was in an airport. I didn't see the pull station behind me. I sat on a chair against a wall, kind of leaned back, bumped something. And I turned behind myself and it was pull station it was an edward sega though so it's highly unlikely that, that would ever get accidentally activated but um yeah those things definitely do get ac accidentally activated all the time have i ever considered working for a fire alarm company yes i have i have i've thought about it a lot obviously 
obviously, yes, I've thought about it a lot. Um, I don't know if it's the route I'm going to go in life. And I have absolutely nothing against everyone that's choosing to do that as a career. I think that's a very rewarding career, especially if you're into these systems in your free time, if, if this is your hobby. Uh, yeah, it, it can be a very rewarding career knowing that you're installing devices that could potentially save lives one day and that, that probably will, that do save lives. And um, especially if you're passionate about it, like I am, but personally, I have enjoyed things more on the suppression phase of the, uh, I guess, the fire cycle in a building rather than the detection phase. I've found that that career has been extremely rewarding to me, and I'm hoping to pursue somewhere within that realm um, more professionally as I get older. It might not be specifically with a fire department, but somewhere within the disaster industry, I think um, is really, it's definitely really interesting to me. So do I like elevators? I didn't realize elevators was a thing until I came across some elevator YouTubers and I made videos on elevators before. Yeah, they're definitely cool. They're interesting. Um, the different buttons and sounds that they can make. Um, but no, I'm probably never going to get to the point where I actually film elevators on a regular basis. Thank you to uh, the person that's been watching since 2017. I appreciate it. And the person that's been there since 2016. All right. So the next step here, actually, I think that's all wired up. I think we did it. So this is now wired up. This is now wired up. And the 7002 T's are now wired up. Now I'm probably all going to test it off camera just because uh, I don't want to spoil the the sounding too much. Um, I want to still make it, you know, a video that is new to people when it comes out. But uh, yeah, everything's all wired up and ready to go now. So this will all just kind of be staged here. I'll probably test it off camera just to make sure it works. But I'm just going to kind of stage it here. And come New Year's night, I'll set everything up on the edge of the garage. I'm going to Put a camera way down at the end of the driveway like i did last year and we'll set everything off at midnight and uh film it and then uh stay up late kind of edit everything together and try and get that video out as early as i can the next morning and uh yeah and then i'll have to spend the next day going through watching everyone else's uh sound off videos so yeah I think we're uh, starting to wrap everything up here. So does anyone else have uh, any other questions? Or uh, I should live the sound off. I should. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Just because I, I like doing it really, really quick because it's cold this time of year. And I, I have a heater right now because the, the door is closed. But uh it normally takes me like a quick 10, 15 minutes, film the parts, and then go back inside. Um, but maybe on like talk or something, I can live stream it real quick and just prop the phone up. Do you study NFPA at all? Uh, I have a copy of NFPA 72 in my room. I have a copy of NFPA 101 in my room. Then I also have a copy of, uh, I forget the number, but it's for the, um, it's for the carbon monoxide alarms. I have that copy. And then also, oh, I, I don't think I've mentioned this. I'm also a certified fire inspector now. Um, yeah. 
that's kind of big news, I guess. But yes, I am a certified fire inspector and that's not for specifically fire alarms. It's more on the fire department side of things just because um, every year buildings are supposed to be inspected by the fire department. It doesn't always end up happening, but if you live in a jurisdiction with a large fire department, it's uh, they definitely do get inspected and it's not, not on a residential basis, but more commercial and industrial, those buildings do get fire department inspections. So I am certified to the IFSAC and pro board level to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like the fire marshal. Um, yes, uh, I'm certified to do that, what the fire marshal does. Uh, I'm not going to wire up the Gentex commanders today, but I do have a bunch of videos out there of those going off if you would like to see those going out there. Um, the alarms are all wired up to the fire alarm control panel right now, which uh, in order to set everything off, I'd have to plug everything in, which means I'd have to get like extension cords and everything to plug this because this isn't going to reach up to the wall. Um, so I'm not going to test everything on camera right now, but um, you'll definitely get to see it when the video comes out. Uh, yes, you can program messages with the SP MNS. I just learned how to do that this year. Um, it involves getting like a headphone jack, plugging it into the panel, and then you can upload your own audio files or you can uh speak into a microphone and um it's a live upload when it when it uploads so um yeah i'm not going to get into like the technical aspects of it maybe i can make a video about it sometime but i can't believe it honestly took me that long to finally sit down and figure that out but it's, it's nice that, that thing can do uh all the different custom messages now just yeah star trek <laughs> uh just because you know i feel like those system tests were starting to become just you know same old same old after a while but um now the system tests with the voice evacuation board can really i mean you've already seen it they've they've become a lot more customized and i can do a lot of really cool things with it so uh, yeah, I was really, really happy to figure that out. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have fire alarm fun. Um, uh, nothing nothing against you there, but it should automatically unmute you at some point. You're definitely not blocked from the channel or anything. I try not to do that unless someone gets extremely inappropriate. <laughs> um Yeah. All right, everyone. I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So I see that there's 83 people on right now. Wow, that's a lot of people. Um, Thank you all for, it looks like I'll be just under two hours here. So thank you all for tuning in and watching. And um, I appreciate all the support from everyone, all the questions. And uh, we'll definitely have to do more live streams in the future. Maybe a live stream system test sometime. I don't know, that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support, all the viewers, all the subscribers. You know, even if you only watch a video once a month, like that's still huge. And um, I couldn't be more honored to have this position on this channel. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I've had a fun time with this hobby and really with with this channel. Um, yeah, it's 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 an absolute honor to to make fire alarm videos for everyone. So. 
Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, I'll have to end it here before I ramble off too much, but uh, yeah, it's been fun. Looking forward to that new year sounding. All right, everyone. And, and then of course, I guess I'll say it, uh, rate, comment and subscribe and have a wonderful day. All right. I will see you all on the YouTube videos. Peace out.